66% of baby boomers say that they plan to keep working after the official retirement age of 65. In fact, many of those over the age of 65 are still working and have no plans to retire at all. Why? Why not retire into the golden years of playing golf, traveling, or taking up fly fishing, which you should have already started taking up fly fishing long before you retired? Folks who continue to work into retirement say they can't afford to retire, they can't afford health care without some kind of work, or they want or need some additional income. Okay, well that's all well and good, but what if you want to change careers a bit later in the game? What if you've been laid off or fired or are just sick of whatever you've been doing since you were 27? How hard will it be to change careers after 50? Is it even possible? Should you even try? And what if I told you that there's a high paying career out there where the average age of the worker is 55? And I'm talking low to mid six figures. So let's talk about it starting now. You're watching the Property IA Show. This video is sponsored by Kaplik. Get the Insurance for Adjusters guide right now at cplic.net slash adjuster TV and by the independent adjusting firm CCMS and Associates. To apply to this fast growing and innovative firm, send an email to careers at ccmsclaims.com and don't forget to attach your resume. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. Okay, for whatever reason, you're finding yourself adrift in the middle of your prime earning years. What can you do? The reality is we're all getting older, all of us. In our 40s even, we start getting weird little creaks and pains. We might grunt when we go to tie our shoes. Our skin doesn't quite look as new anymore. Our hairlines are receding and the grays are starting to come out. We might be a little bit self-conscious about all these things and we may be, some of us for the very first time, taking a serious look at the rest of our lives and realizing that we probably won't be living forever after all. And we may also either want to or have to change careers right now. So is it too late? Is anybody gonna take us seriously or are we gonna end up working the drive-through at a burger joint? Is that even a bad thing? The short answer is no, getting free double cheeseburgers is never a bad thing. But seriously, there are so many examples of people changing careers at 40, 50, even 70 and beyond that the question should really be, if they can do it, why can't I? So in light of that, here is a much nicer stat for you. 40% of working people at age 62 began a second career after the age of 55. Many went back to school, either trade school or college, and many chose to follow their passions or start a business. But if you're 50 or older, you've probably got more than a little wisdom under your hat, so you know that going back to school presents its own very big set of challenges. Making a change like this is not going to be easy and nor should you expect it to be. There's no overnight transformation. The fact is changing careers at honestly any age requires some grit. So what is grit? My definition of grit is persistence, patience, humility, and faith. So for the persistence part, this means hanging in there, right? Taking another step when you think you feel like you don't have the strength to move another muscle. People with grit know that there are strength reserves hiding in all of us and that we can access them by just not taking no for an answer from ourselves. For patience, patience is really the understanding that if we wanna walk from point A to point B and it's gonna take 1,000 steps to do it, we have to take all 1,000 steps. There's no skipping ahead. If you're on a diet, there's no losing 40 pounds one day to the next, most of the time. You literally have to lose every milligram and ounce of fat and that takes time. Accepting that it will take time for you to achieve your goals is at the heart of patience. Now, where your wisdom and intelligence come into play is to figure out how to turn that trip of 1,000 steps into a trip of 800 steps before you ever even take a step. So you have to have a smart plan. Well, what about humility? For a midstream horse change like this, before you can take a big step forward, it may be far more beneficial in the long run to take either a lateral step to the side or a step or three backwards. You may have to do work that somebody at your station in life 
might find to be beneath them. But in order to make this work, you may have to take on unorthodox employment in order to keep the lights on and food on the table while you're building and executing your career change plan. Things like bartending and driving for Uber. Jobs that don't necessarily pay great, but that have unconventional hours, which will then allow you to take classes during the day or take off to go to conventions, trainings, networking sessions, and interviews. And finally, the faith component. What am I talking about with faith? According to the dictionary, faith is the assent of the mind to the truth of a proposition or statement for which there is not complete evidence. There are no guarantees in life, right? So you, but you have faith that you're gonna wake up tomorrow, right? So if you choose to change careers with all that entails, you're taking a risk. You don't have complete evidence on whether or not you're going to be successful, right? And that's a fact. Depending on how well you prepared yourself and your family for this change will have a major impact on how much of a risk we're talking about. But it's a risk nonetheless. Where faith comes into play is giving yourself permission to believe that the outcome that you want, the new job, maybe a new lifestyle, maybe just keeping the wolves away from the door, is really real. And if you are persistent, patient, and humble, you will be successful. And if you don't believe that, then you don't have faith. And you likely won't be successful. A big part of faith is kind of negative. That is, we're not gonna have faith and, or believe in any negative self-talk that tries to talk us out of our ambitions. Like, we're too old, we're not in good shape, we're not any good with computers, we were, it's, too, it's too late for us to try to learn new skills, that kind of thing. We're also not gonna let popular media like movies, news, TV shows, social media, and all that tell us that the odds are not in our favor, so why even bother? It even means acknowledging that there is a real risk of personal economic catastrophe if this thing we're trying to do goes off the rail. And then having the courage to stand up to that fear and put it aside. Accepting the risk does not mean ignoring the risk. It just means that we know the consequences and we do our best to plan for them. All right, so how do we put all this into action? Well, it depends on exactly what you want to do, but I would say for the broad strokes, we'd start with research, right? So you figure out how you wanna spend the next chapter or two or three of your life. And really, this should be the fun part. And if you're anything like me, at this stage in life, you kinda of already have a pretty good idea of what you're into, what you're all about, and what you'd like to do with your life. Next, I would say education. So educate yourself, learning everything that there is to know about the new career that you're after, training, mentorships, which are super duper important, any professional licensing, trade associations you can join to help you, and how well the top performers do so that you've got a goal to go after. And after we've got all the pieces together out on the table like this, and let's put them together into a plan. So how are you gonna get out of your old job and into your new one? You have to have a plan. For me, this plan starts with a budget, right? So if I still have my old career in hand, I'm gonna hang in there until I've got enough extra cash to have a safety net for me and my family while I'm transitioning to that new career. If that takes five months, great. If it takes five years, so be it. This is where being patient will pay off in spades for you. Few people have the grit to accomplish this one part of the plan, and it's something that works in your benefit because there's less competition. And finally, let's take action. So take your plan and make it happen. As you get into your plan, you may find that things aren't what you expected when you laid down this blueprint, or this roadmap for yourself, and that's totally fine. If you had the expectation that new information or obstacles could pop up, then they won't be a surprise to you. Put that humility and faith to work, pivot or adapt, and then execute on your newly revised plan. And honestly, I don't think if I was 20 or 50 that I would do things much differently than this. The key to all of this is that grit. Oh, and what's that career I mentioned at the beginning? Is it being a doctor or an attorney or a hedge fund manager or a YouTuber? Nope. It's being an insurance claims professional. You probably know that insurance companies hire adjusters to work on homeowners and auto owners claims as well as liability claims, commercial claims, inland marine claims, healthcare claims, and so on. But what you might not know, unless you're a faithful viewer of this YouTube channel, is that there is a category of adjuster that is an independent contractor. Insurance companies often aren't fully staffed for whatever reason, or they may have a major catastrophe that requires them to supplement their claims team with independent contractors, like hurricanes, right? I have been one of these independent contractors since 1999. And I can tell you that it's the coolest job you've probably never heard of. Most people are like, what's a what? When people ask me what I do and I tell them that I'm an independent adjuster and I kind of explain it, 
most of them have never heard of it. So we call ourselves independent adjusters or IAs for short. So when a major hurricane hits, Katrina, Irma, um, we'll say wildfires, things like that. The insurance companies call people like me to come and help. And I might be there for two weeks running claims or I might be there for 18 months running claims. Back when I started, I was in my late 20s and probably 85% of the people I worked with had gray hair and in 2020, that hasn't changed. People often find this little gem of a career late in life or they've known about it all along and decide that they're going to retire into the career of an IA and usually those are staff people. And why would anybody wanna do this work? We don't work the entire year. We can work for multiple companies and we can easily accept or decline work almost whenever we want to, which means that we can work when and where we want to with a few exceptions and a few limitations. If you're interested in this career, I invite you to check out adjustertv.com slash start. Okay, that's all for me right now. I hope this video has been useful to you in turning the page to a new chapter in your career and your life, or at least that it was entertaining. If so, hit the like button. And if you didn't find this video useful or entertaining, why are you still watching? Adjuster TV is the premier video resource for the independent adjusting community. And we are committed to bringing you the best, most up-to-date and entertaining programming to help you learn what adjusting is all about, if it's right for you, and how to build a rewarding career as a claims professional. A career where you can help people in their time of crisis and earn a great living. For much more information about becoming a successful property or auto claims IA, including many more videos, free tutorials and webinars, the best gear and software for claims and industry news and IA weather reports, head on over to adjustertv.com. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.